hello there welcome back to my channel it's great to have you back here once again but if it's your first time checking out this channel you know what to do smash that like button hit subscribe and leave me a comment down below if you like what i have to say man you know what's interesting right since the lockdown has been eased around the world and slowly but surely society is getting back to normal i've seemed to have noticed something fairly strange within the comedy circuit out there in la now granted i'm a big fan of comedy i'm a big fan of stand-up and i'm a big fan of that whole la comedy podcasting scene i'm obviously a big fan of the la comedy scene and all the stand-ups over there my gateway drug to that entire scene was mostly via the podcast as you can see from all the random videos i've uploaded on this channel focusing on some of the more questionable characters within the scene but i've noticed something fairly strange which has been confirmed to me via listening a podcast this morning it looks like brendan shawb is not performing at the comedy store anymore now i'm not too sure if this is something that happened recently if this was something that i wasn't aware of prior if he purposely sort of misled the public and let them assume that he was a paid regular but something seems to be amiss something seems to be amiss and my suspicions were confirmed this morning when i listened to the brilliant danish and o'neill brilliant podcast definitely recommend you go and check it out they really do a good job of kind of divulging and getting deep into some of the more wackier stories on the interwebs have you ever kind of stumbled upon a video of something crazy that you've seen on the internet and you don't really know the backstory danish and o'neill is definitely your podcast to go listen to well they kind of confirmed the news that maybe brendan shaw isn't a paid regular as we all assumed at the comedy store but then he had a very interesting interpretation of events himself so i'm going to play the clip from the danish journal show where they basically confirmed the news and then i'll play a clip of what brendan has to say regarding why he's absent from the comedy store and then i guess you guys can all make your minds up yourself oh you, you know it is i got some bad news everybody uh -oh. if, if you were planning a trip to the los angeles area to see brandon schaub at the comedy store uh where he's not a paid regular he will not be performing there why he said due to the fact that they are demanding COVID passports, he will not be performing there. So if you were here to see him, a uh, place where he can't perform unless it's a promoted show, he will not be doing Wait, shows. But he couldn't come anyway because there were no promoted shows. It's just well, well, regular comedy store shows. He will not be doing is shows. That, is that his way of being like, the reason you're not seeing me is because... Of the strict, I, strict I, regiment of the... I don't know. I'm just, I'm saddened to hear it. I hope they can come to some sort of agreement. But there's no them. book shows for a while. I don't yeah, think till well, like June or something. Well, I, I mean, I but, hope they can come to, if it could put him out of business if he doesn't end this boycott. Unbelievable. Um, I I'm haven't a, seen one comic uh, that I know that isn't regularly on the lineup not there. Like everybody's, I, I went there the other, twice in the past uh, 10 days, and I've seen everybody that's ever been there. Well, he's a one-man army. He's taking it on. He's fighting the good fight. In similar news, I will not be fighting for the UFC unless they change their sponsorship deals. Uh, I'm just going to put it out there. If they don't change it, I'm not going to fight. Well, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. If you want the Danish to fight in the UFC, yep. you better pressure Dana White yep. to change those sponsors. Sponsors. So you get the drift. So it looks like maybe when Brendan was on the Comedy Store lineup, it was mostly due to this something called promoted shows. Now, I'm not really familiar with how the inner workings of the Comedy Store actually work, but I just assumed because he was on the lineup that he was a paid regular, which he obviously isn't. And if you're confused as to what paid regular and all that nonsense basically means, I stumbled upon this post here on Reddit that really breaks it down in a really succinct way. And I'm going to read it to you now. I'm a dog guy in the Comedy Store and can speak to this. What most others have said is basically correct. You can sign up to Potluck on Mondays and hope to get picked if you do well there enough times in front of the booker you can move into friends and family or unpaid regular or employee there is no set amount of times that you have to do well you might kill it once a hundred times or maybe you will never get there you'll never get family and friends sorry although unpaid regulars do not get paid for the five minute spots they do they do get paid to work the door host potluck or perform at the la juala La Jolla, La Jolla location. From there, you'll get five minute unpaid opening spots. Um, these can vary. These can be from anywhere between once a week to once a month, depending on the availability. Eventually, hopefully, you're ready or get enough credits to be a paid regular. Paid regulars perform for 15 minutes. A paid regular receives uh, around $20 to perform on the original room. They get a 50% door split of the main room, which obviously is equated to a few hundred dollars. They get a check every two weeks with the money from those spots added up in one check. Paid regulars all get paid the same, whether you're Joe Rogan or someone who sells zero tickets. That's a really good idea. Both unpaid and paid regular can also stop receiving spots altogether once you are once you're in it doesn't mean you're in for life although once you are a paid regular 
your name will get painted on a wall for life. And if you're not familiar, the comedy store has this amazing wall. I'm pretty sure it's on the outside or on the inside. I'm not too sure. I think it's on the foyer bit, if I'm not mistaken. And they've got all the names of all the regulars on there. Obviously, it continues. Above is a typical um, road. However, definitely not the only road to be a regular. If enough paid regulars recommend you, you have enough credits or you're in the right representation, you can skip signing up for potluck. The booker will just say, come by and throw you up to watch you. If you're famous and respected enough, sometimes you don't need to showcase at all. Jerry Seinfeld and Louis CK got turned away from the comedy store in the early years, but then showed up after being known and were allowed to go right on the stage. I have also seen famous people who think, oh, of course they would get spots at the comedy store, get turned away. I personally have been unpaid regular for four years and I showcased three times to be a paid regular. Wish me luck. So obviously what might have happened during the heyday of the comedy store is that Joe Rogan might have been... Brendan Schaub's in to the comedy store and also I'm going to assume Brian Callen because if you take a look at the paid regulars list here on the comedy store it actually does feature I'm pretty sure Brian Callen's name I'm pretty sure Brian Callen is on here yep you've got Brian Callen there you've also got Joe Rogan I'm assuming going to be there too right yeah, Joe Rogan is on there as well. So I'm assuming those two guys were probably responsible for giving him an in to the comedy store at that time. And then, of course, once Joe Rogan moved over to Austin, that basically dried up. But I have to be honest, I was worried for Brendan Schaub when I heard that Adam Egit was taking over the booking and the managing of Joe's um, soon-to-be-open comedy store. Because I did remember hearing for various podcasts that some people behind the scenes were a bit annoyed that Joe was taking all the good people from the comedy store and basically moving them over to Austin, giving them an offer they couldn't refuse. And that was obviously going to damage the comedy store to some some extent i would assume working in a bar or a nighttime venue such as the comedy store you sometimes there's a bit of a flip of a coin as to whether or not you have good stuff or not in terms of running that space and part of the reason why you know that place is so revered is less so about the building and more so about the people in there so if you take all the good people out it can sometimes damage it but i'm sure they'll be fine anyway going forward most likely brendan Shaw was mostly on the promoted shows which i'm assuming are shows that rogan would do Callan would do the leah would do who else wherever else person would end up doing and then they'll put those guys on the list but i'm assuming because they're only opening up with a smaller capacity they don't want to have the promoted shows enlisted there just yet it's just going to be focusing on the regulars and obviously whoever else they can whatever else in-house stuff they do that completely makes sense but if you want some insight into why some people aren't fans of brendan Shaw, this is probably one of the reasons right it's not really something to be ashamed of really that you didn't get booked in the comedy store many illustrious comedians haven't been passed at the comedy store it's not the end of the world and it's still a route back into comedy store anyway if the fact that he's famous and he can sell tickets is definitely going to be something to his advantage he just needs to obviously step up the actual ability to make people laugh on stage but look at how brendan shaw basically was able to twist the narrative on this story whether or not he's he's right or what danish and is saying is right this is what brendan shaw thinks regarding his hiatus from the comedy store and how he basically interprets it which means i have to have show my papers you, well you know to perform at the comedy store now you know, I talked to uh, someone who helps run the comedy store. They well, go, uh, yeah, if, if you, you know, if you want to do a set, you got to show your vaccination. Or take I, a COVID test. Yeah. Right? Are you fucking or kidding Or take a, day, yeah. take or a take COVID a... test that day. I went, oh, I'll wait this out. Ah, yeah. Yeah. I'm good. I'll just keep doing the road. Yeah, they're talking. Which is a really strange perspective to have, right? Because obviously he got COVID. Didn't really take it seriously beforehand. Probably passed it on to the entire studio because I think most of the people in that studio got COVID off the back of Brian getting COVID, Brendan getting COVID. Then went on the road soon after that. So he obviously doesn't really care about the virus too tough. Why would it be such a hassle to just get a rapid test on the day to make sure you could perform at the comedy store where all the murderers are? That would make sense, wouldn't it? So it's very odd that he's kind of spinning it this way. It's very strange. But it's also interesting that he purposely allowed people to think he was passed. That's a really odd thing to do. Like, I would imagine part of the sort of, you know, sense of success and accomplishment from getting passed at the comedy store is that everybody knows you're not passed, right? Even though you're really famous, even though you're really good at what you do, even though you're super successful, really rich, you would wear it with pride that you're not passed so that when you finally do get past everyone can celebrate in your victory but this pretending and letting the fans assume that you are passed just to make it seem away is very really odd it's really really odd but it also makes sense because i do remember ages ago him saying something like oh some comedians were unhappy that he was parking and paid regular spots and stuff because he's obviously got brought in from rogan but this is a really interesting thing that's happening here in terms of seeing what happens the after effects of rogan leaving la and going to austin it's really interesting to see what's happened since rogan has left la to go to austin now a lot of the comedians that he sort of brought through that he was basically propping up and giving opportunities have now basically been left in the lurch either they follow him to austin 
and try and make a life out there and hope the com- that comedy store that he's due to open up opens up very soon. Or they stay in LA and try and fight with everybody else starting from ground zero because there's a whole new booker now at the comedy store. Adam Eager isn't there anymore. It's a whole new regime I'm assuming from top to bottom. So it's an interesting time over there. But it's great to see it open. All the favourites are there. Obviously Bill Burr did a little spot there. Tim Dillon, Sebastian Malstarco, eh, Andrew Santino great list of people already out there in the comedy store and just look at the lineup look at how much it's changed since the days gone by look at the names all changed Jody Miller Benji Alfano Mark Marin um, Harlan Williams Andrew Santino Jason Collins Mary Lynn Rajkback how you pronounce that Kurt Metzger Taylor Tom Taylor Williamson sorry uh, Felicia Michaels Brian Moses completely different lineup I wonder if this is for the better I wonder if this is for the worst I wonder I wonder I wonder but anyway that aside let me know what you think in the comments down below do you think there's a road back for Brendan Shaw by the comedy store can he you know go back to the drawing board and you know decide that it's imperative that he gets funny really quickly and gets funny to a level where he's completely undeniable or do you think Brendan Shaw is going to take this little you know dismissal from the comedy store as a personal insult and just basically go on the road and perform only to his own fans and is that a bad thing I don't really know if that's a bad thing I'd imagine it's not a good thing I'd imagine it's better you just keep performing a in front of loads of different audiences you play in front of black crowds colleges you know random things you pop up at open mics you just keep playing at many places as you can just so you can get funny overall because at the moment you know it's you know it, it does it's safe to say that brendan isn't the most funniest guy at the moment but he's still only four years in there's still a chance for him to basically progress and sharpen up his tools of kind of comedy is that possible let me know in the comments down below. Do you think somebody who basically lies about why they're not at the comedy store could have the humility to basically go back to the drawing board and try and try again? What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below what you think. i will be happy to hear your suggestions and I'll speak to you guys again very, very soon. Take care. Peace.